The rapid proliferation of artificial intelligence applications can help us perform tasks faster, with greater accuracy, and at reduced costs. However, these innovations also present unique risks related to data privacy, data security, and algorithmic bias. In very simple terms, an algorithm, the foundation of AI, is a set of instructions that tells a computer how to perform a particular task. An algorithmic bias can occur when an algorithm perpetuates existing inequities in society, favoring one group over another based on differences in gender, race, socioeconomic status, et cetera. AI is particularly susceptible to bias, which can unintentionally be caused by the data used to train an algorithm or by the humans who designed them. At our current pace, it isn't hard to imagine a world where AI is making unprecedented advancements in virtually every industry, and yet social inequities are perhaps worse than ever before. But that doesn't mean that we should fear AI, but instead focus on the opportunity to minimize these risks. I'm interested in how AI, when used appropriately, can help address these challenges, and I will discuss some of them with you today. I'm a PhD candidate in social policy at the Heller School for Social Policy and Management at Brandeis University. My research on health inequities converges at the intersection of social science, data science, and health policy. I've had the opportunity to contribute over 30 public-facing research articles for an AI research firm on many different AI applications. These articles have been cited by consulting firms such as Accenture, Deloitte, and the McKinsey Global Institute. Reflecting on my earlier research on the gap between those with and without easy access to the internet and technology, known as the digital divide, I noticed that algorithmic bias was presenting some of the same concerning risks. So what does algorithmic bias look like in practice? A pivotal 2019 research study conducted by Obermeyer and colleagues was one of the first to illustrate algorithmic bias in healthcare and to demonstrate how it can be minimized at the development level. The researchers identified bias in an algorithm where greater patient medical expenditures were used to predict greater healthcare needs. For example, if group A spends an average of $10,000 in healthcare costs, while group B spends $5,000, then the algorithm would be more likely to recommend that only group A be enrolled in the treatment program. However, while the researchers found that black patients had less overall medical expenditures, they were actually in poor health compared to white patients. And so it turns out the algorithm was actually predicting costs instead of illness. And this resulted in fewer black patients being identified as even having complex health care needs. And that could ultimately result in fewer black patients receiving the medical care that they require. The researchers' findings were independently confirmed by the algorithm developers, and they decided to work together to adjust the algorithm. By adjusting the algorithm, they were able to reduce racial bias and outcomes by 84%. Studies such as this one fueled my interest in contributing to research that reduces health inequities by disrupting algorithmic bias. Now, while my draw to this phenomenon was through healthcare, Many examples of algorithmic bias have been identified across multiple industries and sectors for several years. This can occur when the data used to train an algorithm reflects certain historical trends. For example, if a job recommendation algorithm is trained on salary data where men earn more than women, then the algorithm is more likely to recommend higher paying jobs to male job applicants over female job applicants. And back in 2015, this happened. Um, an independent study conducted by Carnegie Mellon researchers found that an algorithm that was used to recommend Google ads to job seekers was actually displaying higher paying jobs to men more often than women. A few years later in 2018, a major tech company ended the use of its algorithm designed to help review job applicant resumes. The company discovered that the algorithm was exhibiting gender bias, displaying or favoring female job, male job applicants over female job applicants. And so at this point, you're probably asking yourself, so Kumba, I'm not a computer scientist, 
what can I actually do to help minimize algorithmic bias? Similar to how individuals can volunteer to participate in clinical trials to help researchers develop medicines that are not only innovative, but safe, as a society, we can accelerate safer and more equitable AI by engaging in AI research. It's so important to be proactive in seeking out these opportunities because the chances of being invited to participate in AI research outside of academia are still somewhat limited. Some tech companies invite members from various professional backgrounds to participate in AI research for positive social impact. Similarly, several organizations offer volunteer opportunities to engage in AI research from a multi-stakeholder and interdisciplinary approach. Many workshops and summits occur regularly and also opportunity for comment on AI, public comment for, on AI policies. And if you're interested in gaining technical skills in computer science or data science, free programs are making the ability to learn programming languages more accessible than ever before. To contribute to these efforts, I launched a consulting company to help tech companies better communicate with consumers and to support them in engaging end users in their research processes. The goal is to improve trust, transparency, and to help mitigate algorithmic bias. Bottom line, each one of us can contribute to shaping the future of AI. Let's contribute to a world where AI is accelerating positive change in virtually every industry while bias, risk, and harm are minimized. For example, this means that algorithms recommending job opportunities or healthcare treatment options would be less likely of making the error of excluding qualified individuals based on differences in gender, race, et cetera. We can have a healthier society where AI contributes to reducing differences in health outcomes across all populations. We can live in a nation where every citizen has a basic understanding of how AI works and is confident in contributing to its evolution through their unique skills and experiences. This can be our reality. Let's help normalize the end user involvement and the development of AI as a standard approach by fostering a culture of transparency and collaboration. Let's help normalize culturally responsive AI. That is AI that is designed to respond to the unique needs and culture of the population it serves. This is a critical time in our country and world for the general public to help inform the design of AI. Because culturally responsive AI has the potential to unleash perhaps the best that AI has to offer, a tool to affect positive social change in our society for us all. Thank you.